Okay. And we are live on the What's on an Elephant and Castle Facebook page. Joining me today is Tiffany Baroni um, from the Old Kent Road Family Zone, which is its name right now, which is part of, um, what do I want to say, Surrey Keys, South Surrey Square. Key, Surrey Square. I always say Keys. <laughs> Surrey Square uh, Primary School, um, and who's feeling a little bit under the weather today. Tiffany, thank you so much for joining me. And I know, like, I can't just go, how are you feeling? Because I know you're a little bit under the weather, but are you okay? Yeah, I'm absolutely, I'm here. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, can you tell uh, the community a little bit about who you are? And um, and then we'll we'll get into the projects that you're leading. Right. Okay. So um, the Old Kent Road Family Zone is based, it's based on sort of a, a parent coordinator role that is inside of Surrey Square Primary School. And the function of that role is to um, sort of in a very deep way, assess and sort of work with families and children um, to create an entire, an, a better environment for the child as a whole. So if, for example, you notice there's a child um, in school that has sort of really worn clothes, like, you know, maybe not necessarily keeping up with their own hygiene. Um, Surrey Square is basically designed with the staff and other parent, even the children. It's sort of this sort of idea of just compassion and responsibility to each other. And so they, we, they look after that child. So that would include sort of assessing what's going on in the home to create that environment and why the child is in that state, not just sort of patching it up with like giving the child clothes and saying like, off you go. Sort of actually looking at the issues the child is facing at home and sort of bringing any parties that could help or, you know, it, it could be hunger, it could be um, joblessness in the parents, it could be domestic abuse, it could be just neglect. So it's assessing what's going on as a whole in the family and sort of working on those issues with the parents, with the child to create a better community. And it's proven to be absolutely amazing. It's just, it's, it's unreal. But the problem is, is that the job is such, it's such for a small community. It's just for Surrey Square Primary School. Like her role is just for the 469 students there. So what we would like to do is scale that out to a community role and therefore build this project and have a team of people who do this type of work for the community. So you would not just have people sort of having a food bank. We would assess why are, why are these people going hungry? Is it because they don't have jobs? Is it because they don't have a home? And sort of working on those issues. And if it becomes sort of a sense of okay, this is something we need to campaign for? Is this something we need to be going on a more political level? Do we need to raise the issue across, like with the mayor? We, we have sort of resources and also connections and things like that to sort of make that happen. And we've worked really closely with Citizens UK, who as many people will know, have a very great track record of holding you know, politicians to account to get things done. So that's pretty much what we are about and what we're doing. And it's all through a model of co-production. We work directly with people in the community. We, we do not prescribe. Um, people can come to us and tell us their issues and we sort of just take all of that and we assess what needs to be addressed, prioritize it, and then we sort of go through it like that, where it's it's not sort of us sitting around looking at data and saying, okay, it shows children, you know, obesity rates are like such, but, and we're just gonna implement this program to address that. It's like, no, 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 no. What are the people saying are their issues? And then we go from there. It's, it's funny that, well, first of all, thank you for everything that you do. Thank As you're you. describing the, um, you know, children obviously some children with obesity problems but some people with malnutrition problems and it it just hurts when when you talk about children who are 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 malnourished 
you know, it's coming into 2022 and we live in one of the richest cities on the planet. Yeah. And there are still children out there who are going to school, you know, em empty bellied. And it just, oh man, I want to cry. Hold on. Yeah. Um, it's sorry. Hard, it's heartbreaking. It's just, yeah. cause you can't imagine, I mean, and it's, we have, you, like you said, it's one of the wealthiest cities. Mm. I mean, it's, it's unreal. And it's, and it's right down the road. I mean, we live 15 minutes from the Shard, mm. some of the like top real estate in the, in the whole country. Mm. And and we struggle with, you know, food poverty. And it's it's just unreal to imagine. And then the, the bad that you've got Tesco down the road that's throwing away, you know, tons of food per day. So it is it is quite it's quite an, an issue, but yeah, I mean we no, could go into like the deep <laughs> this really hit me. I think it's just the time of year, you know. And uh I had a guest on a few months ago and you know, she's a single parent, was a single parent raising kids. And, you know, one of the, I think it was a school teacher or a nurse, something it's at someone at school who had noted a foot problem with one of the boys. And it was, it was because the boy, had, you know, shoes were too small. Oh. And, you know, these are the things that, again, like the children today, you know, any country anywhere on the planet should not be going through the things that other, other children have gone through. There's too much wealth. And there's just not a fair distribution of that wealth. And I love the fact that you guys are going, what are we going to do about this? Who are we going to challenge? What politicians do we need to target? How are we going to change the systems for this? It's a huge injustice yeah. that children are going to school with ill-fitting clothes, uh, hygiene issues, and malnutrition. Yeah, so but again, it's, it's, about, it's, it's about addressing the basics. Because how can a child learn and how can a child be expected to succeed? if they are struggling with basic issues like not eating and not sleeping because they don't they're you know in overcrowded accommodation um these are things that you expect you couldn't expect anyone to function like this so why are their children living like this why are their families struggling like this and a lot of the a lot of things that happen too that we find is most of the parents who are living in these poor conditions are actually working so it's not, it isn't a matter of like, you know, they're scrounging off the system, which I hear a lot from, you know, people who are not, you know, buying into what the media sort of feeds them. Um, a lot of these parents that are living in these poor conditions are working, you know, two and three jobs, you know, and it's just, it's not enough. You know, the, the, the pay is just, it's, it just spans all across the entire system. It's just showing us capitalism isn't working anymore. Oh, I, 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 I talk about it a lot to the people <laughs> who I, I talk to is the systems are set up, you know, to make the wealthy wealthier and to just fit us in as a commodity. And just, you know, we just sit there and we, we work, pay taxes, pay into the systems. And this is the thing is that, um, you know, people are forced to shop on Amazon. And uh, because it's just it's cheaper or it's more effective if they're a single parent and they can't go out and get things. But really, it's the whole system is fed in to feed the system to make the, the richer, um, wealthier and us just in that poverty line. And, and it's I don't know what it's going to take Tiffany to change. Like I, I listen to people like Russell Brand talking about like a social conscious and, and like a whole global movement that needs to change the systems um, because it's just so embedded into into you know where we are today it's it's um and it's the self, I, the, the structure of self it's self-interest it's sort of like if i've got enough i don't need to worry about my neighbor it's that lack of social responsibility mm. that you find kind of and I, I always struggle like with for example turnout if we have meetings and that um i hear a lot that they're like oh yeah we would love to help people down there but we can't get them to mobilize we can't get them to to do anything and i'm just like how is it possible for them to actually do extra when they're already working themselves to the bone there if you're like i couldn't imagine squeezing pretty much anything else into my day if somebody was to say like let's go and march and do this and i'm like well i kind of have to be home to you know feed and bathe my kids and then go to work and you don't have time if you're working two and three jobs to you know, then go and fight for your rights. And that's how you just get sort of like snowed over because you're too busy trying to survive 
to remember that to like work on changing the system. That's a job. That's a whole job in itself. I'm I'm so naive with uh, single parenthood that when I met somebody who's very very close to me who has three boys ages five, nine, and twelve, and they were telling me how you know they were tired or stressed, and I was like, you know, you have to give yourself some time during twenty four hours, which is what people have told me, right? Nick, give yourself some time. Love yourself. Have a hot bath do some meditation, go for a little walk, make yourself a coffee, drink some water, just love yourself. So I've tried to tell this person, I was like, you know, why don't you just give yourself, and they're, they're like, I don't have 15 <laughs> minutes. So I was like, everyone has 15 minutes. Come on. No, it's just not guaranteed. Hard enough. It's, yeah, but, it's not a guarantee. Like you can try. <laughs> but then, then I, then all of a sudden I'm, I'm more involved and I'm like, there is no time. There is not, there is no 15 minutes. There isn't. And, uh, and, and I'm not even like a, a, the, 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 I, I, you know, I just help every once in a while and I just get run off my feet and I just don't understand, you know, like the, the, so I don't understand what it's like to be a single parent looking after children. And I yet there, and I think that's the problem. So many politicians are sitting there saying, these people should be mobilizing. These people should be doing something when these people are just doing everything they can and working their fingers to the bone just to survive. Exactly. Yeah. You're just, and then it's, it, it's also like you can make the best plans, you know, it, it, it's famous. Like I was sat there last night and this is an example of that because I live similarly with three sons. And it's just sort of like, I had come home, no laundry to do. I was just gonna make dinner, sit and watch a movie with the kids. But I ended up doing a boatload of laundry because my son came home with, with all of his jumpers that they left, he left out in the mud. The school found them and I come home with a load of laundry <laughs> I just thought so there you are yeah. 10 o'clock at night doing laundry <laughs> so it's it, it isn't with children it's always extremely unpredictable so for them to say anything and that's what made it so hard in lockdown and I also I feel like it was such a great in a way it was great because it sort of showed how difficult it actually is to be home with children and to look after them and also trying to work. And then it, so now that's sort of why people are sort of like, well, we can't, you know, you can't expect us to work from home and do, have the kids and produce work. You'll be up 24 hours. Yeah. So it's, it's, I do enjoy this movement of like people just saying I'm enough's enough, no more five day work week. Like I need to have flexible, that's the way it should go forward. Well, I believe too, you know, people should have the power over their work environment as long as they're being productive and they're doing, you know, and it's, you know, production oriented rather than like, oh, you know, I'm just gonna sit here in the office and sit on Facebook for eight hours a day and just do a little bit of work here and there. But so I am a big advocate too of, of you know, people should be able to have a choice over, over where they work. I like to get out of my flat. I like to come across the road to where I'm working now, where we met. Yeah. Um, and and let's, let's get to the where how we talked when we met because you know you are you have a North American accent so <laughs> let's kind of let's go into how Tiffany ended up in London. Oh um, well, I'm originally from. If Washington. you don't, if you don't mind, yeah. Oh yeah, I, I don't mind because it's it's different. It's interesting because people sort of, I think too, they wonder how I got into this work here when I'm from somewhere else. Um, and I come from Washington D.C., which is also kind of. It's quite similar to where I'm living now, because now I'm in Woolworth and DC is quite like that as well. Um, it's more minority based than people believe it is because it is it is the capital, but it's extremely um, impoverished in areas. And so I kind of always grew up with this sense of social justice. And obviously in America, it's much more racially divided. And for, and for that reason, it's economically segregated as well as racially segregated. So you've got these, you know, I feel like there's a lot of similarities between Washington DC from where I come from to London. And I, when I got here, it just seemed natural to get involved in the community and trying to make it better because it seems senseless. When here there's even more resources available to sort of create a better environment for children to succeed. So I just felt like, yeah, it's just sort of pushing pushing through to get that done. 
So when I was offered this project, I was like, yeah, I'll do it. This is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Why Washington, D.C. to London, though? What was the thing that, what was the bridge there? Oh, I bounced around. I was in, um, I went to uni in Tucson, Arizona, University of Arizona. And then I moved, after September 11th, I moved to Hollywood, just because it seemed fun. Why not? Mm -hmm. And then I moved to, I went to Argentina for a spell and then Mexico City for a long time. And then I moved back to Washington. And obviously I couldn't stay there. Don't. Um, I'm not a fan. It's just it's too political. And then I decided I always wanted to live in London. So I popped over here on a student visa and I got to stay. So that's how I ended up here. And that was what, almost 14 years ago. Yeah. It's funny because you were in um, LA the same time I was. Yeah. <laughs> it was It was just after September 11th and some stuff that happened in my life. And I was like, I'm going to leave London and I'm going to make it in LA. Um, I didn't make it in LA, but I had no, a good time. I mean, I don't know. I thought about having kids. What turned me, what made me leave was LA was not a very kid friendly place. Hmm. And I thought I really want to have children. And I was about, when I left, I was about 25, 26. So I thought if I do want us to get settled and get stable or have a, a life that actually revolved around reality, I should get out of here. And that's what sort of sent me on my way because LA is not real. Oh, <laughs> it's not real. Funny, I, I just watched the last um, Netflix thing of Selling Sunset. Oh, gosh. It's just, it's so awful that it's just <laughs> in to see this, these, this fakeness of life. And, and I think this is the thing, Tiffany, is that we are, we're, this is, the obtuse side of what we're sold as a bill of goods as, as people is that if you look like this, if you wear these clothes, if you drive these cars, you are somehow better than um, people who don't. And yeah. I used to think that I used to think that because I was so fear driven of not being accepted, of not being liked, of, you know, being judged by everyone. I thought that I had to put on this facade, you know, and I would overspend on clothes. I would extend my credit limits to, to, getting cars that I couldn't afford and I wasn't paying my bills. I wasn't managing my life, my life because I was so fear driven um, that I needed all of these exterior things to what I, to fix the inside. And, and as we know, like you yeah. know, exteriors fix the insides. Um, yeah. And that's, it, you know, and it is just a, one of the things I suppose, you know, this is why I love the work that you guys are doing because it's just true honest work where we're going like there is a problem here there's an issue here and let's not just put band-aids on it so. let's help let's help people with solutions and i think for me all of these all of it comes down to is, is having community again and that's what really helped me is having a community of people around me that were like nick you don't need all that stuff yeah. you're a good man we love you learn to love yourself doesn't matter what you're wearing and I think this is the, the beautiful thing too of around the work that we, you know, that we're both doing, I guess, in the, in the Southwark area and the Elephant and Castle community is that there is just such a beautiful, rich community there of, the, of diversity and talent. Today, I have a beautiful coffee meeting with a, a guy who has a coffee shop right across the road at the, at the Elephant Arcade. And I'm really looking forward to it because I walked by, I was at his coffee shop the other day had I, uh, with a meeting with Diana and he had a, a provincial flag of where I'm from in Canada, Saskatchewan. Yeah. And it's because he's a cowboy and he's like, I love cowboy territory. And I was like, how you know, where in London are you going to see a flag from Saskatchewan? Yeah. And um and somebody flying it other than the elephant and castle. But then it's in beautiful. London you would totally see. <laughs> That's the beauty of London, yeah. in my in, yeah. in my opinion, is that it's I I often find because I've been here for so long now I go, of course you would. Like it's yeah. just London is such a, I would, this is why I prefer it is that it's such a rich like, city. You don't move to London and like not blend. It, there is no such thing as not mixing in with it because it is just so mixed, so diverse. And it's just, it's gorgeous. I mean, it always has been historically even. So I think that oh, really right. helps. Yeah. That it's just it is, always it is. been this 
rich mix and it it won't change it won't ever be anything anything else no i no hope it, i hope it want. doesn't i've always said it's the wrong place to target um you know for for the bad stuff that has happened here from outside places because it is one of the most diverse and accepting places i've ever been to i know it has its pockets of problems um, you know, even with regards to social and economic diversity and, and everything, but it is a really amazing city and I love it and I love community and I love that. Um, I suppose the work that you do, can you talk more about the community building where you're working with people to, to say that, you know, being part of a community can be far more fulfilling than trying to elevate yourself through having like material gains. You know, because I knew like that seemed to be a, a problem with some of the people is that they felt that because they didn't have certain things that they were considered less than. Right. Um, yeah. Well, that's people. just so, a matter of the ceiling, I feel like um, that's perpetuated here. I find that is very difficult. And as a whole, England has that you have a ceiling, you have a queen. I mean, that in itself just makes it so you'll never you'll never get to that level. You'll never be court level. You'll never, you know what I mean? It's like, it puts you in your place. You're a commoner. And so I have a lot of people tell me, uh, uh, I know I'm not a minister. I know I'm not a Lord. So I, but I, you know, I deserve to be treated like a human. I hear that quite, quite often. And it's quite shocking because it's like, they don't necessarily, no, it's not like they're aspiring to even be that, but they just, re they recognize that they're not even being treated as humans especially um, in terms of housing and things like that. It's just sort of the basic things that people should be able to have and afford are not available. And it's, and I think that's where you get, like people start to wonder like about their worth. They start feeling like low, if this is what, and you have the government telling you, you should just accept what it is we give you. Even if it's a leaky roof, it's full of mold. Um, you know, the only job offer prospects you have are construction or security for our young black youth. They don't offer anything of any substance or anything that, you know, they automatically assume that they are underskilled or undereducated. Um, there is a lot, a lot of that. And in this community, it's sort of, that's what we've kind of been, we've been more assessing it, like how deep is the damage and how can we engage because people do not want to engage because they simply feel like they do not have power to do so. And they also, but I, I've also sat in really enlightening meetings where you've had like groups of women who are, who are going, why don't we just make our own childcare? You know, where the neighborhood ladies get together and they look after the kids while one mom goes off and does the shopping and then comes back and then another one. And they sat there like making a structure but then that brings us to how it works in a lot of countries around the world, traditionally, historically, it's like, it takes a village to raise kids. So it's, it's where, like, why, where have we gotten into this space where you have to have a specific child minder or a nanny? It's like these things, this idea that, you know, we're also separate and it's whereas kids in other villages and other places in the world, you're raised you know, with your neighbors, everybody looks after each other. Even my mother grew up that way. She grew up with like her neighbors knowing everything she did and telling on her, you know? And it's like, we've gotten away from that. And it seems like the further away we get from that, the further like community becomes unattainable if we keep going away. So we're also kind of looking into how to engage people and bring them back in. And it's about trust. We, because a lot of people, I get the first thing I get is, are you Southwark Council? And I'm just like, no. And they're like, oh. <laughs> so there it's, they don't trust. They don't trust their government. They don't trust their MPs. They don't trust their councillors. They do not trust anyone. They've all just let them down so many times. This area has been just let down that we're now just sort of trying to build up that community capacity where people believe again that actually I can make a difference. So that's part of the job, which is really challenging. It seems like the elders, you know, we, we've, again, we've gone away because I know my, my dad used to teach on an indigenous reserve in Canada and I, I got to 
or I consider them family, um, you know, but these communities really do, it is a village that raises and it is, you know, um, very sacred feminine, you know, the, the, it is the, the, the woman who is the head of the clan, you know, and, and the, the, a man adopts the, the woman's clan in marriage. And um, there's very, I don't know if it's dying, but from what I hear from them is they were still very conscious of passing on the old ways of, yeah. of, of the learning of the earth, being connected to mama earth, you know, and there's, there's, it's just so beautiful. And I, it's not a, a, a unique system in, in North, like those, these indigenous uh, communities all around the world have had these these um, systems for you know listening to the elders and sitting down and having community and passing down amazing knowledge and young men specifically from from my when well, my experience is is being guided by not just the father but by the uncles you know the grandfather um, to teach to to give them this passage to manhood. And it seems like there are so many amazing, beautiful people in in and elders, but they were not they're not given the space oh, no. um, or the respect to be able to pass on the knowledge and to help young men, you know, again, in my experience, young men to step into manhood and to step into responsibility and step into, um, you know, what it's like to this, these ideas around what it's like to be a real man and right. challenging these these things of like not being able to express your emotions. Yeah. Do you think that that's something? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I was going to go with a no, question. No, do you think that that's, that? Do you think that's something that you will look at doing? Is is being able to create space for, for like the women that that come up with ideas to be able to say, let's come up with our own childcare, or let's honor this culture because there's so many cultures around there, and uh, and let's give space to these cultures and the elders to be able to come and speak of the ways that they, you know, that we know are going to be beneficial to the to the new ways. Right. I think that's the issue is sort of allowing these cultures and all in a culture that seems to be that seems to be across many indigenous and people of color and people of color is that that is their background. It's like I know it's like that with African families and um, Hispanic families. It's extremely tight knit and close. And it is the village that, you know, it's the group that raises. But I think modern society moves so far away from that. And it teaches us that it's about the individual. It's all about separate. It's all about, because it's capitalism, isn't it? It's capitalism. Um, all about me on, me on Instagram, right? Exactly. So it's just sort of getting, turning it. And this is, I mean, obviously a huge endeavor, but it's just sort of one of those things. It's getting people to go, to stop doubting what they already know and start turning back towards what they know, their own knowledge, their own family. And also, I mean, people genuinely don't focus on the elderly. This area has one of the highest areas of, of elderly population in, in London. And they're they're living in poverty and nobody's they're they're lonely, nobody interacts with them. And it's just very it, it's 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 just a shambles, really. I mean, because it's sort of like it's it's capitalism has basically told us as you get older, you work less, so you're less valuable and that's how they're treated and this is you know obviously at the root of why things are just are crumbling because we've left out an entire we've marginalized an entire part of society that that anthropologically are there to assist in the raising of children they've found that in studies that that the reason we live so long is to assist and raising of the younger ones. You, uh, yeah, you. I, I'm just. I'm. I. I just want to be able to. It's funny, like listening to stories and and hearing stories of the older of the generations that have been through some real stuff. You know, I know we're going through stuff now, but you know, the the, the grandparents and the, the great grandparents that have you know come out of a the a, a world war or, you know, another war or. or you know, and these uh, these ideas of things that they've learned without technology, which are very human based, and like you said, anthropologically, we have evolved in these in these systems for, you know, not just thousands of years, but hundreds of thousands of years. We've been part of communities and tribes, and we, you know, to get to where we are, we had to we had to have a purpose within our tribe. And today's world, we're not like that. So our poor little 
our poor little evil evolved brains and bodies are trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Yeah. Why? No wonder we feel so disconnected because we're not sitting around a table sharing food and breaking bread with other members of our family and talking about things rather than put little Susie and little Johnny in their rooms with their iPads. Yeah. Disconnected and isolated and not giving them any nurturing. You know, we're, yeah. yeah. It's shocking that we, you even have to sort of add, you have to even say to parents that it's, you know, you should spend 20 minutes of uninterrupted time with your children a day. And it's like shocking to me that we even have to sort of lay that out. Like why, like, isn't that, I mean, that's quite a strange thing to say. Like you have to tell parents, like make sure you spend 20 minutes. And it's like, don't you think that would be, you know, if it was, if, if they were, if we didn't have all of these distractions, it they would be around anyway. They would be there when you're cooking. They would be there when you're, you know, cleaning the laundry. They would be there learning with you as you go. But we've made life, we've made life very complicated for ourselves, I think. <laughs> yeah. well, I think it's, it's not by design. I think it's just something we've fallen into, you know, the ease of... It, yeah, and it's funny, of, but also I think it is in a way by design, as you said earlier, to make the rich keep them in their place. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, the systems are, are designed, but I think it's our, our coping strategies and our way to deal with it. Again, maybe as a single parent, like you just don't know, you don't have, have, have anybody to, to rely on if, yeah. if God forbid you get COVID. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, yeah. It's like, forget, what? Yeah, you yeah, just sit yeah. there and panic. <laughs> like I did this yeah. morning. Have a yeah. Proper freak out. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you you don't, and that's the problem. I should be able to turn to my community and say mm -hmm. how, like, I this is my problem, mm -hmm. you know, and then it just, it isn't a thing. It's interesting, though, because you see this a lot in, like, it is still, I mean, it's still alive in a lot of area, a lot of places, but I would say the bigger the city, it's probably, the, you, you know, you don't see it as much. You know, I, not I I've seen a lot of, um, you're right, because of the fear factor and that, that cities, we all would think, you know, city of like 8 million people, you're never going to be alone. But we know, uh, you know, these big metropolises are, are designed to keep us isolated and to compartmentalize into little studio flats or little renting bedrooms. We can't even afford flats nowadays. I mean, people are renting bedrooms, Yeah. you know, so that they can, again, just get up and go to work and be part, you know, and, and maybe get to the gym but there's no time to socialize there's no time to do anything we can't because of covid now and it's um yeah it's hard out there and this is why i really do hope that anybody who listens to this can can come to you know yourself or, or our organization retribe because we're we're there we use technology to connect we use this beautiful technology to get there and say hey we've been through some stuff we completely honor that you've been through some stuff too let's hold each other while we can heal and yeah. also move forward and honoring what we've been through so that our children's children are and and our elders and our community no longer need to be and it's not like they need new stuff they just yeah. need some love love you know some hellos some virtual hugs some just i get you and here's some space to listen and i'm so excited tiffany because i got to see uh, uh um some stuff that's going on around the elephant and castle i can't say much too much um but there's going to be spaces and there's going to be great yeah and i actually i love i should say the guy the, the the coffee shop was the black cowboy coffee shop and just a great community space and i'm actually going there this evening and i'm going to hang out and just um hang out with a couple of guys and sit there and chat and I, I wish that's, I could go. Yeah, just, <laughs> like, I wish I could go. <laughs> because I'm we like, don't I need to know it. the. Yeah, we don't need to know answers. We don't need to know solutions. We just need to be able to hold each other through these space and through these times, um, so that we can come out feeling at least connected to someone. Because I've I've definitely found that it is it's in connection that I find other solutions. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And they yeah, people yeah. do, they just get together and then they find solutions. And that's exactly what we're playing. We want to do. We're yeah. tired of, you know, people imposing things. 
on the community and it's never worked. Nothing's ever worked. So it's time that, you know, we at least, you know, we have it, luckily this is a very heavily resourced um, project. And so we shouldn't, we just need the input. We just need people to participate. And I think we can do a lot with this. Yeah, I'm excited that we'll be able to um, collaborate in the new year and, you know, get boots on the ground and try to actually, you know, yeah. make connections and let people. It's going to be an exciting one of. next year. It's going to be yeah, very I mean, exciting. I'm, I think there's going to be a revolution, a nonviolent revolution, and I think it's going to come by people saying, "I've had enough." Yep. Let's start doing our own things in our community. Um, thank you, government, for doing things. You you must be so busy <laughs> having Christmas parties. Yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna do what, we're just gonna look after ourselves and and um, and come up with our own kind of ways of being able to support one another uh, in our community. So I and I think that it's happening. I even have dreams about um, people saying it's enough is enough, and we've got to start doing our own things. And yeah, I think we're definitely moving systems. that way. Definitely, especially with working culture and all this, people are just, they're tired of working for nothing. They're tired of working for a week off here and there. They're tired of they're looking back on their lives and seeing that they've given 20 years to a company that then lays them off. People are sick of it. I think they're just sick of, they're sick of a system that doesn't care about them at all. Yeah, we're too we're too beautiful in our humanness to be a commodity to systems. Yeah, and, and such individuals and to... ide so many ideas and. Yeah, <sighs> I'm, I I um I wanted to say something else, and then go. So okay, so you you the the old Kent Road, um, family, family zone. Time. It what's what's kind of going to be the twenty twenty next few months how's that going to look um pretty much we should be hashing out our sort of like our proposed like the actual how we want it to look how we want it to manifest in the, in the neighborhood like right now i guess the question is how is it going to do its job how many people do we need how where are we basing it out of and it's kind of one of those things where it's all kind of coming at us at once. So I have a lot of meetings in January. It's going to be very, very busy because but it's come, it's flushing itself out. I think that's pretty much what the first quarter is going to look like. It's just sort of getting it nailed down to how it will operate and be on the ground. So that's, that's pretty much where we are. And after that, I do not know, because I feel like then it will just kind of it'll fly, won't it? Yeah. I would like to, like some of the tips that I was given, Tiffany, for, for people, again, who, who might be watching this, who are like, what do I do to feel part of a community? And I think that uh, the things that I've learned is, is to look for um, places to maybe do some volunteer work. Yep. Um, uh, look for places to actually donate blood. Um, is a big thing to help you feel part of your community. That was one of the things that I was taught. Um, and then find out who's on the voting electoral and then do some walking around and looking for your, your, your black and brown bodied friends and allies and ask if you're white, this is for, for me, you know, um, who, which, which, who, who to vote for, you know, other shops that you can support. Um, rather than going on to Amazon and to the big chain department right. stores, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that makes you feel part of your community. I know it does for me because I took those, those things on board. And, and uh, it, funny, the donating blood thing really helped. I don't, See, don't know why. Was, I wouldn't have guessed that. Like donating blood hey. is probably like, I'm squeamish for that. I am horrible for that, I have to admit. But I, <laughs> like for you to say that was very like, is it because you're yeah. sat there and you can just chat? Yeah, well, I think it's about giving, like it's a real physical thing of giving yourself to your community. You know that that Literally. blood is used to save lives in your community. Um, and it's just such an enriching experience because you actually do feel like you've, you've, you've given up your flesh. <laughs> you know? um, and, uh, and again, and then, then the other things of like making sure you vote, get on the electoral roll, ask your 
allies in different ethnic communities and um, uh, who who you can who you can help because the systems do need to change and they're going to change through that through democratic processes but we need to not do this kind of two or three party stuff we need to start kind of giving power to other people yeah, who are going to really coalition. yeah there, well there isn't there and there's you know it's what democracy is all about so yeah. use your vote properly or use your vote to change the and, systems yes and as i'm watching germany very closely they have a very now it's very interesting over there oh the i don't know enough side. to talk about that oh yeah. uh, there it's just the gist is they now have sort of a liberal green democratic coalition government that is literally there to tackle the the crisis the the global they want to help sort it out and just sort of move germany to the future as Germany oh, wow. likes to do anyway. <laughs> yeah. They always seem to be a bit a bit like that anyway, but I'm very, I'm very intrigued to see how this goes. Yeah, me too. I'm intrigued. Yeah, I'm intrigued. have a look and, into and it. I, I will, Tiffany. And and you know, I I can't thank you enough for um for being pushing through with you not <laughs> feeling very well today. Um no, it's okay. You know, I I I know you're not well. I know you've shown up for us. Uh so thank you so much for doing that. And um what what do you it's gonna be a very what's your holiday quarantine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, again, let us know if there's anything that we can do, okay? If you if you need some soup or her yeah. anything. <laughs> or some of yeah. that black cowboy coffee. Okay, there we go. I wanna black see, yeah, coffee. I definitely want to go there. I'm so sad I can't go now, but yeah. Yeah, he actually, I'm going to try to get him onto one of these, uh, these lives and he actually gets his own coffee. Now he's got his own brand um, of cool. coffee, coffee beans. So yeah, I, the, the community is amazing. I love yeah. it. And, and I, I am, I'm really looking forward to April when things kind of get, get, get going um, with the other things that they've got going on, which I can't talk about, but right. I'm excited for that okay. though. I like, I like surprises. Yeah. Um, Tiffany, happy holidays. Yeah, uh, what are you going to be doing? Days. What are you going to be doing? Is it just going to be a, a quiet I mean, time at home or? Surviving now is pretty much <laughs> it for me. I'm like, Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it's just probably going to be quiet now. Okay. That's okay. It's nothing wrong with that. No, no. no. It, yeah. yeah, it'll be a good one to reflect. Reflect. Yes. And, and, I, and again, really looking forward to collaborating with you in 2022. Yes, uh, thank definitely. you so much for joining me today. And thanks for having me. You're welcome. Um, and thanks, everybody, for watching. Don't forget to join me on Thursday uh, at 11 a.m. for another Tough Through Tender session. We'll see you all then. Thanks a lot. Bye.